In this tutorial I'm going to look at three things. The first one is the current composition of the air. The second is the effect that human activity is having on the composition of today's atmosphere. And the third thing is how today's atmosphere came to be, how it was made from the original atmosphere that the Earth started with many millions of years ago. This pie chart shows the current composition of the air and you need to know the following figures. You need to know that the gas which makes up the majority of the air, around about four-fifths of the air, is nitrogen at 78%. Around about one-fifth of the air is oxygen at 21%, whereas carbon dioxide is a tiny fraction of the air, 0.035%. Those three gases, you need to know the percentages of those gases in the air. You also need to be aware that the air contains a certain amount of water vapour, but of course that can vary with the climate and the weather in a particular part of the world. We also need to understand how human influences are having an effect on the present day atmosphere. This carbon cycle describes how the percentage of carbon dioxide in the air has remained almost constant for the last few million years. Carbon dioxide can be put into the air by respiration. Respiration is a process where carbon compounds in animals or plants convert to carbon dioxide. Remember that the sugars, for example, in plants or starch in plants can be respired for energy. They react with oxygen in the air to produce carbon dioxide and water vapour. A process that balances that is photosynthesis. Photosynthesis takes carbon dioxide out of the air and locks it back into plants. Plants use carbon dioxide and water from their roots and uses the energy from the sun to produce sugars and starches in the plant. For millions of years those two processes have pretty much balanced themselves and the carbon dioxide percentage in the air hasn't changed a great deal. However, this third process, combustion, is upsetting matters. Combustion takes carbon compounds in fossil fuels, burns them and makes carbon dioxide in the air. This will increase the percentage of carbon dioxide in the air and of course reduce the levels of oxygen in the air which are used for combustion. And it's because there's been so much combustion of fuels in the last two or three hundred years since the Industrial Revolution and because of the industrialization of some of the nations across the world that the amount of carbon dioxide in the air is very slowly creeping up. When you're asked about the carbon cycle, you must not talk about combustion, respiration, and photosynthesis, putting oxygen into the air or taking carbon dioxide out of the air or whatever. You must talk about the percentage changes or how they change the level of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the air. As you can see here, combustion and respiration both decrease the percentage of oxygen in the air. They use up oxygen out of the air and increase the percentage of carbon dioxide in the air. Whereas photosynthesis does the reverse, it will increase the percentage of oxygen in the air and decrease the percentage of carbon dioxide. But of course the levels of oxygen and carbon dioxide stay relatively constant because of this balance between respiration and photosynthesis. However, the amount of combustion happening is slowly increasing the percentage of carbon dioxide in the air. The other gas that we're aware of in the air, nitrogen, doesn't change a great deal in terms of its percentage because it's a very inert or unreactive gas and therefore doesn't get itself involved in these processes. Finally, at foundation level, you need to have a broad idea of how the current atmosphere came to be, how it evolved from the original atmosphere many, many millions of years ago. Scientists believe that when the Earth was first made, it was covered in volcanoes. And these volcanoes were spewing out lots of gas, particularly carbon dioxide and water vapour. They believe there were also other gases in the air, such as ammonia. 
which has the formula NH3. Now, as the Earth cooled down, so the water vapour in the air started to condense and formed oceans. And this would have reduced the amount of water vapour in the air. And shortly, we believe, after water was made, tiny, tiny organisms formed in that water. And these were like little algae organisms. And these were capable of photosynthesis. Now, as these were capable of photosynthesis, some of the carbon dioxide in the air and also that which dissolved into the water were used by these tiny organisms to make another gas, oxygen. And in that way, the amount of oxygen in the air increased and the amount of carbon dioxide in the air decreased. The water vapour in the air had decreased somewhat because it had condensed into the oceans. Finally, the ammonia was made into another gas that was made into nitrogen gas. And the amount of nitrogen gas in the air increased because it's very unreactive and therefore once it was made it wasn't, as it were, unmade. So the early atmosphere, which was largely water vapour and carbon dioxide, has changed into oxygen, nitrogen and a tiny amount of carbon dioxide. In summary, the original atmosphere came from gases escaping from the interior of the Earth, in other words from volcanoes, those gases were largely carbon dioxide and water vapour. And when plants evolved, photosynthesis increased the percentage of oxygen until it reached today's level.